Sports Network and the Chuck Vinson Show coming to you from Gondolier in Jefferson City, Tennessee, 344 East Broadway Boulevard. Site sw- swing by, see Scott Freeman and the crew here. Delicious pizzas, cakes, strombolis, calzones, you name it, they'll deliver it to you, including the magnificent Zorba plate featuring <laughs> steak, chicken, pork, shrimp, lamb, spanakopita, salad, spaghetti. Enough fe- food to feed you <coughs> for a week. It's truly a joy uh, to be here at probably the best restaurant in the Lakeway area, just my humble opinion. Amen. Just my humble opinion. And I do know food a, a little <laughs> bit. <coughs> we look ahead. Uh, it, uh, the, again, we talked about the road does not get any nope. easier. No. Nope. Brevard comes in here on Wednesday. It's an 8 o'clock tip inside Home Field House and pregame show here on the Eagle Sports Network at 745. Brevard, a scary team at 3-9. and nine. All three wins in league play, 3-5. and five in the conference coming off of a six-point loss at home to Catawba. But the Tornadoes have, well, I guess Moose is the appropriate name, Darius Moose, averaging 30, a double-double, 30 and 10 over the past three games. What challenge do the Tornadoes pose uh, when they roll into Holt Fieldhouse? Josh? Well, they, <clears throat> I mean, uh, they're a team that when you look at them in terms of wins and losses, you think, well, three and nine, that 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 means nothing to me. Uh, they they are so very scary. The uh, the Queens team that just beat us. Uh, I think at one point in that game, uh, Brevard was thirty. Down, had them down fourteen, I think. Oh, yeah, it was it was insane. This yeah. <clears throat> and uh, their scheme is very unique. They're they're a Princeton style team. Um, you know. <laughs> They they just have multiple shooters. They have Moose. The Moose is loose. He's running wild. <coughs> and, um, you know, he's got the inside. He's got the outside. Their defense, their defensive numbers aren't great, but their their style uh, creates problems. It's a, it's, a, it's a true matchup zone. It's basically a switching man-to-man. Regardless of what you do lineup-wise, they're going to match to you, and that can be really confusing and, and confounding. So, uh, this is going to be a very, very difficult opponent. Uh, they had us. We were down 17 at one point down there last yeah. year. We were able to win. Uh, Winget, who won our conference tournament last year, uh, they hit a three at the buzzer. They were they were, they were were down two and hit a three to win. It, it'll be a tough challenge, no matter how you get it around it. Shoot the three-point <coughs> shot pretty well. I've made 327 on the year, and Dominique Pickett's the leader – in that regard, as well as Trevon Shaw. Shaw actually leads the league in three-point field goal percentage. Yeah. She's the only guy above 50%. It's not like he hasn't taken a ton. He shot 60 of them, mm-hmm. made 34. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you defend, uh, at times, a five-out <coughs> Princeton-style offense? That's tough, man. It's tough because, you know, technically we, r- we run a 2-3 matchup, which m- which means we, we in, in, in theory, should have better protection at the rim. Uh, but at times, you you know, your perimeter is exposed. Uh, we'll have to make some adjustments. Last year we adjusted, and, and, and did a, I thought I did a really pretty good job of <coughs> getting to the getting to the spots and contesting shots. But uh, I think they're actually a, 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 m- a more versatile team this year because because of Moose and the impact he yeah. gives. You know, he so you've got to be careful. You, you can't say, well, we're just going to take away the perimeter because Moose can jump up there and put 30 on you, and and, and that really makes it difficult. So. We're going to do two things. We, we've got to we've got to make whatever adjustments we need to make defensively, but then we've got to score at, at, at an efficient rate and put points on the board. And and and, and thankfully, I, you know, we've with the exclusion of the game uh, at Queens, I think uh, we, we we had been scoring the ball better the first two games mm-hmm. back after break, and and have really scored the ball pretty well at home throughout the year. So yeah. I'm hoping that that, that that Holt will be good to us. Brevard, <coughs> you brought up Brevard defensively. You say they do some weird stuff, but they've given up plenty of points yeah. on the year. Opponents averaging 87 against them. Uh, it, if you have to pigeonhole a, a weak point, is there anything out there? or How, how do you adjust to uh, what they do defensively, uh, switching man to man? Well, the, that switching thing it kills plays. You know, it doesn't it doesn't give you the benefit necessarily of the play. And you can you can you can scheme it where you you know they're going to switch, so you you align certain players were in, in places to to maybe get the switch to your benefit mm-hmm. but they they'll 
they'll sometimes pre-switch knowing if you're going to go that route. So <laughs> it's, like, it's sort of like a, you know, who's ahead of who in those kind of games. So we're not going to get too complicated with it. We don't want our guys thinking. We just want them uh, playing and, and trusting their, their, their instincts. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we, t- what we typically do, and uh, that's trying to push it in transition in the half court. Uh, try to get you know try to get uh, as many post uh, drives uh, and post touches as we can and sort of sort of sort of play off that. <laughs> you, you bring up Darius Moose. He's certainly <coughs> one aspect to Brevard's offense. But this is a tornado club that has four players averaging double figures yeah. and more specifically averaging more than twelve points yeah. a, a game. Sure, you may be able to slow down Moose, but how do you prevent the Miles Leathers the Dominique Pickett's the Shaws from uh, showing up and filling the scoring void if you do shut Moose down uh, that he may leave. Well, I think we have to we have to acknowledge the fact that they've got so many weapons that that, that you, you can't you know <coughs> you can't stop them all. I think one of, the, one of the great equalizers there is that you know they've got to stop us too. <laughs> so yeah. uh, and I think our defense <coughs> excuse me at least our defensive numbers are better and I would like to think that you know. If we can do the do a good enough job defensively, along with putting points on the board ourselves, maybe maybe we can come out on the front edge of that. What do you take away from the two games last year, especially the overtime victory in uh, Boschmer Arena? Well, you know that was a there were so many games last year. It seemed like to me that, that, that our guys really sort of defied the percentages and the odds, and that that was one of them. Uh, because they they had us dead to right down there. I mean, I think we were down 17 at one point, second and a half. And then our guys just sort of showed the poise, and we we had great leadership, um, especially McCall and Crane, and, and, and were able to sort of just pull it out there at, at the end. So um, I think they'll come in here with a great deal of confidence. Um, I mean, they, 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 they're they like everybody else. They they look at the standing, and they look at, at, at the result of games, and <coughs> they know that we're coming uh, – <coughs> excuse me – they know that we're coming off a loss, and you know I'm, I'm sure they're hoping that we might be a little bit dis- discouraged. Uh, actually, the reverse is true. We had a great practice today, and I think our guys are they, losing does not sit well in this program, and, 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 and especially when it's based on the fact that we we didn't execute and, and really do the things we could have controlled. So, um, you know, I, I think I think we we those experiences last year help us, uh, but but you know again we got a new team this year. They've got a better team this year. And we just we just sort of got to now establish a new history with them in this first game and see see where it goes from there going into the second. If, if you look at what Leathers and Pickett and Moose to do, they all seem to be <coughs> passing the ball fairly well. All of them have around three assists per game on, yeah. on the year. How, how do you guard against something where the the pass to the shooter could come from anywhere? You can't. I mean, you know, typically we try to identify players uh, that we feel like we have to try to really focus in on or, or trends. Uh, and, and, again, with the way they play, they, they've got such a good balance that, you know, uh, you can't just say we've got to do this or, 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 or that, you know. We've got, to, we've got to do a good job, obviously, on Moose. That's a given. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he's their best option around the, around the basket. Then you've got to really – you got to <laughs> cover that three-point line, the great equalizer, and and hopefully our guys will do a good enough job <laughs> of getting out there to contest shots and and limit uncontested ones.